Hello. Good morning. Hello, hello. All working. Hmm. Hello. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, we're live. <laughs> How's everyone going? Um, yes, more hard surface stuff today. Yes, um, the idea is just to give this guy a little bit of a polishing and maybe some just work on some alphas and I want to share with you some some techniques uh, to create really cool and simple uh, a really cool set of alphas very in a very simple way hey Luis Carlos how's it going thanks for stopping guy thanks for stopping by guys I'm going to turn off the thumbnail there we go so you can see the the chat uh, let me know if the if if you can hear like the noise in the background I have the fan on uh, I can turn it off temporarily, but it's uh, it's a bit hot in here, so let me know if it's uh, if it's annoying. I'm happy to turn it off for the time being. But um, yeah, so today we're gonna be doing some alphas. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff to generate very intricate patterns and alphas that look like, that look really cool. Um, also sharing some of the the polishing techniques that you could use. Although I'm not gonna be using them, I'm gonna keep these pretty loose and pretty sketchy because um, the idea is just to you know, have fun with the design um, rather than focusing too much on the <laughs> on the retopology and all that. So let me show you something else. Hey, Javier, how's it going? Good to have you here. Yeah, sorry about yesterday. Um, I couldn't make it yesterday to the Sears Live, but um, Kyle said that there was a spot today, so I grabbed it. <laughs> and that's why we are doing this today. Um, hang on, so I just want to show you, where did I put it? Here. There we go. So this is the, this is the character. This is what we're working on today. And this is where we left off last time. Obviously, we didn't do any of the texturing and any of that. Uh, this is something that I did after the stream, but again, I just wanted to show you this because it's really, really, really simple. Once you have set up your your meshes and whatever you want to have inside ZBrush, you can send it to Substance Painter or Marmoset Toolbox 3 using the ZBrush Compositor. So that's what I use to generate this quick concept. I literally just place the camera, um, yeah, find the angle that I wanted. Click the one single button to create the composite in Substance Painter. Send it over there, and then just um, just paint some materials, and that's it. I didn't even tweak the materials. I just used standard um, materials that or materials that come with Substance anyway. Uh, but you can see this is still the Dynamesh object. I haven't actually changed much, but because we have some of the edges, crisp edges that we have uh, that we started defining last stream, then you can. You know, take advantage of that curvature map and all that to generate these scratches and that sort of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, other than that, I generated a an emissive map or an emissive channel and just painted literally with a with a brush. I mask everything and painted literally where I wanted to have these little lights. <laughs> you see, it's not even it's not very very well done anyway. It's just like <laughs> blobs, but um, it gives you an idea, and that's that's the whole point. Of what I wanted to to show, um, so that's it. Uh, this is something. <laughs> this is something else that I shared um, last night and or today's email. If you got your email today, um, about something I'm, that I'm working on, and I'm pretty excited to share more things soon. But let's uh, let's get into the stream, shall we? All right. So after the last stream as well, I went ahead and polished things a little bit more, as in. You know, with the edge polish, flatten things a bit more and refine some of the the edges here, especially at the back. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it. Like I haven't done much. This is still a pretty sketchy surface. This is still a Dynamesh. I also have the smooth surface or the smooth brush selected. The, sorry, the strong smooth selected, so I can smooth things rather quickly, uh, especially at this resolution that we currently have this model at. In, in Dynamesh, uh, it sits at 1960, which is pretty, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but that's that's about it, really. I haven't done much other than that. Just with patience, go over the same areas and refining them. The edges are, uh, sorry, the crevices are pretty much the same. So what I want to do is first, before I start with the alphas and giving you the like a cool technique to generate alphas uh, with the relatively new tools in ZBrush, I want to show or I want to share uh, a polishing technique that is probably the most common one for this type of sketches or to move from a dynamish object like this into a more refined set of pieces and it it is basically like it revolves it revolves around the idea of cutting it into the the pieces that you can like you know digest or, or handle separately so for example um i'm going to bring in my epic pen so that i can draw on top of this and like i said this is probably a, this is a very common way to um to polish and it gives great re results and it also makes it easier to to retopologize like a smaller pieces as well as you know having a bunch of different sub tools and then projecting everything into a high res sorry in a low res mesh once you are ready if you want to do that sort of thing but this is going to be a concept uh, so i'm not going to do that but i want to show you how to do it in case you want to you know go ahead and do it so for example what i would do with this character is i would take this piece just this piece of the head I think that goes all the way around here, right? And I will split that or generate a separate mesh. So I end up with two pieces, the one that is separate and the one that is sort of, um, you know, the other one, <laughs> the, the complementary part of this, of this shape, right? And that will be step one. Then you have subtool one and subtool two, and then you can start like subdividing it even more. So you can take this bit, right? And that's gonna be another one. And then you take, uh, I don't know, this one. And that's going to be another one. So you end up with one, two, three, and four subtools. Obviously, you can have even more and uh, even subdivide things to the, you know, to the extreme and have like a, just a tiny little piece here, like for a fifth um, subtool. And that obviously is going to be able, it's going to allow you to work a little bit faster and just sort of like clean things up and, um, a little bit easier right so i'm going to show you the technique like one of the techniques there are many ways to do the same thing in zbrush um i'm going to show you something that i found to be relatively easy you can even set it up all in a macro so that you can click one button and it will do, it, like zbrush will do it for you and then you can spend as much time cleaning it up separately as you want um so yeah i'm going to show you that again not necessarily what i'm going to do but i want to show you the technique anyway so i'm going to clone this sub tool so that I can work on it separately. I have, uh, I'm gonna turn on, turn off perspective and I'm gonna make sure that I have symmetry on so that I can work on both sides. It doesn't, doesn't really matter because at the end, some of the brushes that I'm gonna use to, to polish that certain areas, those, they don't work with symmetry. So I sometimes just end up working on one side of the, of the character and then just mirror and weld, which is again, pretty simple. And we can keep working with Dynamesh, right? So the, the idea, is to mask the areas that you want. So I'm gonna use the mask lasso. So that's kind of like step one. I'm gonna use the mask lasso to try to mask an area like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can we can refine it later. So I can just go ahead and hold the Alt key, do this type of thing and then hold the Alt key again Sorry, let me repeat that. So con control key to access the, the masking brushes, right? I said um, alt, but it's actually control. And then when you wanna remove that area, you hold the alt key, you can let go of the control key and that's kind of, you know, clearing up that piece or that mask. So I'm gonna keep doing that a little bit more. And the trick here is not to go exactly on the, kind of like on the mask areas. So just leave a little bit of the, the mask outside of the, no, sorry, not the mask areas, the crevice areas. So you'll see, I'm not going right into the, into the crevice. I'm just leaving a tiny bit of space. That's, that's important. Um, just because when you go ahead and generate the, the mass that this, this thing needs 
to so that you can you know use it as an individual piece um, if you have the crevices Siri is going to extrude things based on their normals and that might sound a little bit weird I'll explain that in detail in just a second but uh, just at this stage just keep in mind that all you're doing is masking out the the area that you want to keep um, you can also do oops uh, mask with the mask pen that's totally valid as well I just thought that for this this is gonna be easier to just do that uh, with a mask lasso but you know you can use the mask pen as well and refine that so yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect just keep in mind that like I'm not doing it right at right to the edge alright let's say that we are happy with this I'm just gonna check yep I'm gonna check that there is no other mask around so maybe with a different material it's easier to see so I have these ones here actually this is a cool pattern anyway <laughs> let's go ahead and get rid of that and I'm just going to refine things a bit here yeah this is definitely a, a better material to be doing this masking it's gonna be easier to see All right. So, yeah, let's say that that's what we want to separate. That's our first piece that we want to separate from the head um, and so that we can work a little bit easier. Then once you have this mask done, then we can go to the extract sub palette here and we're going to extract this bit, but we're going to tweak some of the settings. So the idea is that by default, um, with these settings here in the extract, Siri is going to analyze the surface. So let's say that this is the surface, looking at it from, yeah, from a side view, and it's going to say, "All right, I want, um, according to these settings, we want to extrude a thickness of 0 0.02, which is actually quite a bit. Um, this number should be in low values most of the time. Um, so it want to extrude 0 0.02, and then it's going to do it double. So it's going to ignore." Um, whether the whether this value is basically if double is on right um series is going to ignore whether this value is positive or negative so it's going to ignore this and it's just going to do it in both sides right so it's going to take it's going to analyze the surface it's going to say okay 0 0.02 thickness let's go ahead and extract this much Right, so it's going to do it inwards and outwards. Let's say that this is the inner inner section and the out, outer <laughs> section, right? So this value here between the surface and whatever is extruded, that's equivalent to this thickness value. So if you want something thicker, you can just set this to, I don't know, just a value of one, which is a lot for this value, and then it will be something like that, all right? So that's that's the default settings, and then you hit extract, accept, and continue. I'll show you, but um, that's the idea. So what we want to do actually is we want to remove the double so that we can control the positive or negative values. So if this is the if this is the surface, we turn off double, and we can set this this thickness value to negative, for example, or positive. Right now it's positive. If we set up to negative values, it's going to only do it in the negative. Um, axis of the polygons, or like the the opposite of the normals, the po the opposite of where the normal of the polygon is facing to, right? So this one is the inner area. So what this is allow, what this is going to allow us to do is that keep the same surface that we have established already with the sketch, but it's going to push things in so that we can have thickness and then start working on that, right? So let's just do the this one one time, and then I can. I can repeat the process again uh, with another one. So I'm going to turn off double. Uh, by the way, this T border, um, what it's going to do is create kind of like an inset around every, well, around the the polygroup area that is going to generate be generated by this mask. So uh, this one is not really important um, for what we're going to do. But yeah, uh, I would recommend always leave it on unless you want to generate some triangles and corners around the edge, which um, it's not ideal, but sometimes might be useful. Anyway, now that we have the double, we can uh, tell Seabrush to generate um, 
actually let's go ahead and push this one to 0 0.0 249 positive right so that we can actually see the thickness and then we invert or take the same number but we invert it so let's click on extract so there you go this is the preview of this thickness so Siri is giving you a preview of that uh, which is not much right and this is just a preview so if I move the camera this is gonna be gone so we need a little bit more so I'm gonna go for 0 0.05 uh, 6 sorry 65 extract and there we go so this one is a little bit thicker and it's working better I think we can even push it to let's go for 0 0.1 I'm gonna type it this is easier 0 0.1 and extract there we go so now we have a relatively good thickness that we can play around with and be able to to polish a bit better but obviously it's extruding everything outwards because of the positive value so all we have to do is before we accept Remember, every time that you click extract, it's going to give you a preview and then you can tweak these values. So I'm going to go for minus 0 0.1, which is the value that we just established is a good thickness, uh, but we're going to do it in the negative value. I'm going to click extract. And there we go. So right now, this is still a preview, but you can see that it is matching perfectly to the surface of the sketch. So if I click accept, now we have a new subtool. Right, there was a tiny little bit of extra masking, but we'll get rid of that. Um, a new tool that matches the surface, but there is some thickness underneath, right? That's one way to do it. Like I said, there's many ways to do it, and you might find an easier way to do it than this. Um, like I said, this is something that I think it is the easiest way for me in my workflow. I can set up a macro, which I already also have, um, and I can just mask the area that I want, click a macro, a macro, is going to create a separate mesh with thickness inside or inwards and then I can polish it right let me just check the chat because I went over this a bit fast hey Stefano uh, the clay clay like texture Instagram soup thank you so much yeah so it's um it's something that I've been working on for the past few weeks uh, kind of like a, an update to the to the clay render guy that I did ages ago I reckon more than five years ago if i'm not mistaken or something al along the lines um and yeah so i want to do an upgrade or an update to that as well as uh, sharing a bunch of new resources that i think are going to be pretty cool to generate that look in um in 3d um the face in the corner that was so helpful so you're talking about this area i assume that is just a cam view a custom cam view you can do you can put anything there so that's uh, a new feature of Zeros 2020, and it's super helpful. It basically rotates as you rotate as you rotate your model. It just changes the angles. It's not a plugin or anything like that. You can just simply, uh, you know, load a model that you want. In this case, I loaded an anatomical figure like the head, and I did some painting on on the different muscle system, and then I click on cam view create cam view and it generated this all in those in those angles um, I've already talked about this in like previous two or three streams so if you want to have a look at that um, I'll explain how to do that it's pretty simple um, nice shadow hi Pablo I wanted to ask during your VR tutorial what headset were you using for VR um, so I don't know which video you're watching so in the first video I explain what are, what the tools and the hardware as well as the software is so i'm using the vive pro that one so that's the one that i use for the tutorial um that you that you probably saw on the email so if you go to the 3d concept artist um blog the 3d concept artist.com and then you go to the blog uh it's in there so the first video of the series there are three videos in the series it explains all that And Luis Carlos, could you show us how to create a macro you mentioned before? Uh, if we get a chance to do it later, uh, I'll probably will. It is super simple. Um, there's not not much to do. I'll, I'll show you something at the end. I just want to get to the um, to the alphas because we've been spending a lot of time in this guy, um, and we actually haven't got to the details and create some of the alphas that I want to show. So if there is time, I'll definitely show you. All right. So we generated this uh, this new piece with the extract function. I'm going to go to 
the original or the, the, the base and I'm going to clear my mask. I'm going to go to the new mesh, go into solo mode, clear my mask and you'll see we have thickness and of course this is all um, kind of like dirty <laughs> but what we can do is isolate this piece and delete it and we can do the same thing here. This is just basically you know poorly masked these areas <laughs> but uh, it's okay. Just use the select rectangular, sorry the select lasso and delete. All right. So obviously this carries the the resolution of the dynamesh that we had before, uh, but we can turn down the resolution or app doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But before I do that, I wanna turn off the line and just show you that this one has a bunch of polygroups. So the original surface has one polygroup, the thickness has a different one, and the newly extruded surface has a new polygroup. But you'll see all those intersections and all of that, that is the result of um, insetting or inflating inwards, right? If you inflate it outwards, probably it wouldn't be as noticeable or as strong the, the wonky effect that we got here, but it's not a big deal because what we can do is polish by groups, right? So um, for you guys should be the formation palette, polish by groups, and polish by groups is gonna um, try to constrain the polishing to the difference between polygroups. So you can just do that. Maybe because of the resolution of Dynamesh, this one is gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little bit too much. Um, because of the resolution, this is not making a huge impact. So anyway, let's go ahead and change the resolution or redynamize this entire thing and we can keep groups redynamize that oops i think let's go ahead and leave it as it is i just want to change the resolution a bit because obviously um this was done with 1960 i believe it was in terms of resolution so i want to try to keep it consistent all right, so that's our dynamic right there. And I think that's that's better. Cool. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and smooth this out a bit. So I'm going to use the, the smooth strong and I'm going to try to constrain my my smoothing surface or my my smoothing effect to this bottom area. And because we have these polygroups, what we can do is hold the control and shift key to access the select um, brushes. I'm gonna select just this bit, right? The top part, which is the one that I actually wanna show basically in the in the sketch. I'm gonna mask it and invert that selection or bring back the selection. So now uh, all of this smoothing that I'm doing is gonna be done um, a little bit faster without worrying too much about the, the actual shape that I wanna keep, right? Now that you have this, you can actually bring in the Gizmo 3D, for example, and this is another technique that you can use. Center it to the unmask areas. I can scale this down and maybe push it like so, right? If you wanna add more thickness, uh, however, this can be done straight from the, the step that I show you and just increase the thickness. But if you wanna fine tune it, you can do it like that. I wanna clear the mask and redynamize all this. Whoops, we have to reduce a little bit the if you get to this point, sometimes this happens, right? So if you're dynameshing and then you realize there's some, um, let me undo all that. Um, if you redynamesh and you get a bunch of holes, it's because of the dynamesh resolution and because of the amount of uh, stretching there is. So I can just go ahead and very quickly smooth these areas. That should alleviate a little bit of the problem, but if we still get some of the the dots or the holes, we need to change the resolution again. So let's redynamesh and that it, that did a trick. So sometimes if you have too much stretching of the polygons and it gives you those holes, that's one of the problems that you can fix. All right. So this is just a smooth brush, nothing else. And done. All right, so now I'm gonna turn off my um, polyframe. And this is a simple, well, like 
uh, an individual shape or a, just a subtool that we can work a little bit faster with. So we can use things like clipping, trimming, we can still use the edge polish. So um, for example here, we can start polishing all that, but then we don't have the other piece that was next to it that as soon as we start doing these type of things is gonna you know um, affect the other area as well. So we have a lot more freedom to to use this um, edge polish with you know with a lot of strength and a bit more loosely than before, right? And it doesn't matter like the inside area doesn't really matter because you won't be able to see it. Is mostly to keep those edges and the and the difference between the panels a bit more crisp. All right, so that's one way to do it, right? Like you could do it like that. Um, you can also use other trim brushes and clipping brushes. So holding Control and Shift and click on the thumb uh, on the brush thumbnail, you have access to a bunch of different clipping and trimming brushes. So for instance, if you use the uh, the trim circle, right, that's gonna trim a circle. <laughs> so Control and Shift, click and drag, and you get this sort of shape. Right, and I can hold the space bar to move this around, and I can sort of trim this area like so, right? And that creates, you know, a simpler, a simpler shape. Um, the thing with the trim brush is that it's not going to give you a perfectly. <clears throat> basically, it's not going to cut straight to the model, straight to the model perfectly. So in this case, it's better to use a clipping brush and then just fix the surfaces. So uh, we can do the same thing with this clip brush. So this is just the clip brush. I'm going to repeat the process here. Let go. Whoops. Maybe let's do it on this side. There we go. Um, if you want to invert the effect of this brush, just press hold. That's what I did there. Um, I'm just going to try to find a better angle. Again, <clears throat> control, let's do it from this one, sorry. Control, shift, click and drag. Place it back with the, with the space bar, just placing it the way that you want it to. And pressing the Alt key is going to invert the effects. So it's going to clip that area. All right, so that gives you uh, a much better result. But all this brush is doing is pushing those polygons towards the edges of that, of that brush size. Uh, but that's all we need. We have a cleaner angle there, and then we can use the edge polish to keep refining it. Right? Um, another brush you can use, obviously, are the clipping curve, or is the clipping curve. And the clipping curve, I'm just going to work on this side, so it's better. So for example here, that looks a little bit wonky and wobbly, I can go ahead and hold Control and Shift and bring in a curve, right? And this is just a straight line. And the shaded line or the shaded part of the line is going to be the area that you're going to clip. So I'm going to hold the Alt key once to create a, a point, like a Bezier curve point. And now I can do this type of thing. So let's say somewhere around there. And I'm going to play, play, uh, press the space bar, and that's just going to allow me to tweak that placement. Let go, and now we have a very sharp angle there, right? Keep in mind that if it doesn't look very, like, particularly good here on the need, uh, don't worry too much about that because, again, you won't be able to see it, and this is just to polish that, um, that section. I'm going to repeat the same process here. Control shift we can drag. Maybe another old key there. Let go. All right. So then we can use the smooth brush, maybe with less intensity. Because the clip brush is going to give you a very, very sharp edge. And I want to, you know, maintain a little bit of beveling in certain areas. All right. This front part, we can just do it with the the smooth brush and the edge polish. And like I said, there's, there are many different ways to do the same thing in ZBrush. Um, for me, this is the most, one, one of the most natural ways to do it because I still feel that I'm sculpting, uh, although I'm 
polishing the shapes. All right, so now that we have here a more polished version, you can obviously do it even, even um, you know, with more care than what I did. Uh, I can get out of solo mode, and now you see that the two surfaces are intersecting. So what I'll do is to keep uh, an original mesh that I can keep extracting parts and do what I just did with the top bit, but I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna hide that one. So I'm gonna call this one um, uh, source, right? Uh, so this is gonna be the source where you can extract the different pieces. And the second one, I will just use it as, as um, kind of like as um, a placement mesh, right? So that one, I'm going to reduce the resolution or not let's just keep it let's keep it simple let's leave it as it is right and now I'm in solo mode and with this smooth brush the strong smooth brush with a lot um, with a lot of intensity I'm gonna go ahead and smooth all of this right we probably need to reduce the dynamic quite a bit All right, so that is easier to explain what I'm doing. So I'm just smoothing all that part, all that area here at the top. And you can even use the clay brush to just hold in the Alt key and push things even more. So it's basically giving some space for the new piece to actually be the one that you can see uh, if you want to see it in combination with the other pieces or the other parts of the of the mecha in this case. And then a lot of smoothing. All right, so I obviously changed the, the definition of this quite a bit, but remember we still have the source which we can use to extract the other pieces. So now if I go out of solo mode, now we have this piece that defines that area and is much better. So the idea here, I, again, this is not what I'm gonna be using but um, for, the rest, for the rest of the character, but I wanted to show you in case you wanna do it. So the idea is to keep repeating the process. So I'll do it one more time, a little bit faster with this head. So I'm gonna go to the source, go into solo mode, and now I'm gonna work on, let's say, this bit here. Or let's just keep it simple. I'm gonna work on this bit around here. So I'm gonna use the mask lasso And let's just mask that out like so. All right, and let's clear the mask that we don't need. So all of that in there. Um, another great thing about ZBrush is that it remembers the settings that you used before. So because we have the source um, mesh that we extracted the top bit, all of these settings are exactly the same. So I know I'm gonna get the same thickness and the same result. All I have to do is click extract, accept, and now I have my new piece in here. I can clear the mask, go to the original, clear the mask, hide it, go back to this piece and start the process of refining this a bit more. I'm gonna change the dynamic resolution and that's another great thing about this process or about this technique of polishing is that you can keep you can keep uh, separate pieces with different um, dynamic resolution, right? Because right now the the head is currently at a you know at a, at a high res um, dynamic, whereas these pieces are tiny, so they don't need as much resolution, and you can you know control that based on what pieces you are uh, dynamishing and, and all that. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna use the move brush to push this up a bit. Just so that I can fit it to the actual shape that I created a bit more. Like the original shape at least. And then use the, the standard, sorry, the, the edge polish. Depending on the on the piece that you are working on, uh, you could probably just get away with a quick um, dynamesh as well as clay polish. So I'm gonna do that 
just to show you something else. So clay polish and then go around the edges and fix that bit or those parts. Uh, if I want to, you know, straight line in here, maybe I'll do the same thing with the clipping brushes. There we go. Redynamesh just in case. And that's it. So now I have this other piece and I can just use the move brush with a large brush size and just reposition this piece based on my original mesh so that I can, you know, I can see all of these things fitting a little bit better. But now this piece has a different resolution than this piece, right? Um, all right, and then you can just go to this sort of placement one and do the same thing, use the clay brush, push it, holding the Alt key, just this bit. That This is just so that you can actually see what you're placing and, and how the pieces are interacting with each other. But once you complete the process of extracting and fitting all the, the, the pieces together, this mesh is going to still work as a, as a kind of like the mesh that sits underneath everything. Right, so now we have two pieces that are working together very nicely. Uh, one thing that I like to do is uh, assign poly paint very quickly to, the, to those pieces so that I know which ones are already polished. And at that stage, you can also go back to the Siri measure. So for example, um, let's say these two pieces are already, are already kind of like separate and polished in a way, but they're not like super um, clean. So I just assign, I don't know, something like a purple color, right? Um, make sure I have RGB, fill object and fill object, right? So now I have, I know that the pink parts are the ones that I have already extracted that are already polished, but they're not 100% there yet. And I can just turn the polyframe if I don't wanna see it, but at least I know. Um, the next step would be to probably retopologize. Again, I'm not gonna go to through the whole thing, but again, I want to show you the or share with you the techniques. So if I hold this uh, or select this, go into solo mode. Um, this doesn't have, you know, very good poly groups, so I'm gonna just assign a single one. And what I can do is I'm gonna increase the resolution a tiny bit. Go to my damp sander brush, and I'm just going to refine this edge a bit better, holding the Alt key. So refining this edge is going to help me with the C modeler, sorry, the Siri measure, so that the Siri measure can find these angles much, much easier. And I don't care about the, the underneath area anyway, or the, the area underneath. I just wanna make sure I have certain, certain edges um, working fine. All right, let's say something like that is okay. I'm gonna go to the Siri measure for you guys is in here. I have it here in my UI, but you cannot see it. So I'm gonna do it from here. Um, I'm gonna turn off adaptive for the time being and I'm gonna make sure I have same or let's just go for half. Um, and I'm gonna detect edges and let's do a Siri measure. Let's see what that gives us. Cool. Pretty decent. So let's do it again. And again, every time you do it, Siri is going to half the, the amount of polygons um, and the detect edges is going to keep those edges that we sort of creased. Creased in a way. I think that one is fine. All right. So I'm happy with this. We can go ahead and use the pinch brush, which I mentioned in the last stream to refine certain things like these edges. But now this is a, a clean topology or a cleaner topology. Obviously you can do it, you can do a much better job than this. I'm just rushing through the process really. But just to show that is once you, you get the hang of it, it just becomes a, a very repetitive thing. Uh, almost like just second nature to just go ahead and do all this. Cool, so let's say this is a, a cleaner topology. What you can do is enable dynamic so dynamic resolution is going to give you a preview of how smooth this surface is going to look if you were to um, subdivide it. So here's my dynamic um, on. 
I can also use the edge polish and refine it. And what I'm actually refining is the low resolution mesh, basically. So, or the the mesh at this at this low resolution, right? So it's much it's much easier, and you know, it gives you cleaner cleaner topology or cleaner um, surfaces. Hopefully this is useful, guys. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's say we're happy with this. This is already a nice cleaner topology than or cleaner than the other one. This is not a Dynamesh. Get out of solo mode, right? Um, I have the dynamic on. So in this case, that this specific um, this specific piece is already, let's say, more polished or more closer to the final than than the rest of the shapes, what I like to do is also tag it with a different color. So in this case, this one would be, let's go for a green, maybe, fill object. So now when I'm working, I know, okay, I'm, I'm like halfway in between. So I haven't even finished with the polishing of the sketch and I just started with the topology of the green, green parts. So the idea is to start adding or uh, creating, basically bringing the whole head to a pink color and then once I have all these pieces, bring it to a green color. That's that's it. That's the that's the the workflow, right? Uh, but you can see having an, a separate pieces allows you to control the the resolution. So right now, what I have in this piece is only a thousand polygons, and I have dynamic on, right? And what I have in this one is one hundred and sixty-two thousand because this is a still a dynamesh object, and so yeah, that's the idea that you can control the, the different resolutions, obviously the placement. Um, if you don't like this, let's say um, around here, you can go ahead and push it upwards a bit more just to generate some variation here in the paneling. Uh, and that that is obviously much easier once you have all the pieces separate. Um, all right, but that's <laughs> that's kind of like the the quick workflow or the workflow in a nutshell on how to polish and retopologize maybe the whole thing um, or bit by bit, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna keep working as a Dynamesh object and just start adding the details in here. And this is gonna be a concept so I can just polish it a little bit further with all the details and all that, assign some materials and then just render it. That's, uh, that's gonna be my process for this guy. Um, but I know some of you guys are into, you know, taking it all the way to, you know, put it into a game engine or something. So that's why I wanted to show you that. Let's see. Um, will you have a table at Lightbox Expo this year, uh, Comics Legend? I would love to, but I've heard that it's really hard right now. They have like a thousand applications or something like that and only 200 tables. So I won't be able to do it. Plus it's not um, at a time that I can take off, uh, like time off basically. And just to go to America from from Australia, I kind of like need at least one week because <laughs> it's like four days back and forth, like in, in just traveling. I mean, almost two days going and uh, over there and two days going back. So unfortunately, no, that's the, that's the short answer. I would hope to do it maybe next year, but probably not this year, unless some of the the, the people that are already that already have a table wanna invite me and share a table I might I might think it I might think about it um, how to delete the selected tool the selected tool so the entire set of subtools um, let me know if that's what you mean how to delete the entire tool with all of the subtools if that's what you mean sub address what's up what's up uh, why not using only the top polygroup, delete the others, do all the work you have to do, and then add thickness? Um, yeah, that's another way to do it. It's um, uh, yes, I guess in that case you could retopologize first and then add the thickness afterwards. Would be easier. Um, again, it's just there are many ways to do the same thing. Just don't they, they didn't want to. I mean, there, there are a bunch of other tools. Uh, like I mentioned last stream, you can use the, the topology brush uh, and then just create a quick topology. So let me just show you, that's another tool. Um, I didn't, don't wanna get too 
into this uh, 945. All right, I think I, we can do this really quickly. So uh, where is it? Where is my topology brush? Topology brush. So uh, this is something else that I showed in the previous stream or in the last stream. Let's do it in this one. So with this topology brush, you can just go ahead and do these things. and then just close them. And this is just kind of like a working piece. Oops. I did a, I did a mess in here, but I'm gonna delete some of this because I made a mess. Uh, to, delete, to delete these lines, you can just hold the um, the old key and then basically trace another line. So that's what I'm doing roughly here, but I'm having triangles and a bunch of other stuff. All right, roughly, I mean, I did that very, very quickly, but you can just draw the, the topology. Uh, once you're happy, just click outside of the, of the, or this area, so anywhere in the mesh, and Siri is gonna create that topology for you. It's not the best one right now. Um, so let's go ahead and split on mask. So now we have this piece. Let's go into solo mode, and let's go to the move brush. Right, so you have a cleaner loop. You can you can actually divide and delete lower just so that you have more. And then use the move brush with the Aki curve. Just generate some more pointy loops. I mean, this was very, very quick, so it's not gonna give you a great result. Um, but now that you have these, uh, again, cleaner, you have a nice set of loops, a nice set of um, borders, poly loops, sorry, poly groups and then you can use that to your advantage. So, uh, like I said, there are many different ways to do the same thing. So in this case, I would use the Siri measure, but instead of using adapt, I'm gonna keep it as maybe same. I don't wanna have it. Um, and instead of using detect edges, I'm gonna keep groups and leave these smooth groups to, to one and then go to Siri measure. Right, so I'm going to actually, if, well, if I wanna keep these borders, let's try detect edges, see what happens. Now, uh, so if I wanna keep these sharp edges in this case, what I can do is give more polygroups. So I'm gonna isolate that one, right? And with the mask lasso, I'm gonna isolate this one and this one, and then add a polygroup, same thing here. So basically every time that I want a sharp edge, I'm gonna create a different polygroup. So that's what I'm doing. Very quickly hiding pieces, assigning new polygroups. Um, this one I made a I made an error here. All right, hang on a second. Just doing this very quickly. <laughs> All right, so now we have polygroups at the top, at the side, in here and here. So every time that I have a polygroup or that series is gonna find a, a difference between polygroup, it's gonna keep that hard edge. Or it's gonna try to do it uh, if I keep these groups. So let's try it again. And there you go. So we have a cleaner topology, way cleaner than the other method as well, um, and all these polygroups. So again, it's, it's depending on how you wanna approach your sculpting and you're refining. For me, I find the, the other method a little bit more practical uh, just because I'm faster with that. As soon as I have something like this that is like almost like good enough uh, for you know baking or whatever, I feel like I feel a little bit more constrained. <laughs> so I don't wanna get super, um, you know, 
boxed into these type of things just yet. Uh, but of course, this one allows you to have more control over the volume. So you can bring in the C modeler. Uh, you can right click on a face, polygroup all, and you can click and hold shift. And that's going to push everything in a little bit. Uh, you can do, again, because of the simpler topology, you can go ahead and do beveling. So you can add bevel, right? And then you can also enable dynamic, and then you end up a pretty end up with a pretty decent shape in there, right? So different ways, different ways to do the same thing. Of course, you can choose whichever it's better for you or for your workflow. Um, it's not that's not to say that the the one that I show you first is the only one that I use. I use a bunch of them. Um, it's depending on the on the situation, I guess. Hey Diego, greetings from Peru. How's he going? Sorry, I didn't understand. You might be muted. My Google Home just uh, turned on by itself. Um, which anatomy scheme do you use? Bamus Lumis. Uh, if you're referring to the to the books, uh, I use a bunch. Lumis is pretty good. Bames or, or Lumis, um, yeah, I use, I have a bunch of them. It's not like, there's not a preference. <laughs> All of them are like uh, learning resources. How you have done with lasso with the leftover parts of the top one? Huh. Not sure what you mean. All right. Maybe if you can clarify that question, I can answer it. But let's go ahead and move into the details because <laughs> um, we haven't done much really other than showing you the, the techniques of polishing that I'm not gonna be using. So um, what I'm going to do is create a, a bunch of alphas and there are some really cool tools in ZeroRush now that allow you to create things very quickly. So um, let's go ahead and start with some, some paneling, some alphas for paneling. So I'm gonna create a new tool or click on a new tool, like I don't, it doesn't matter, it could be a narrow 3D, make it a poly mesh, and I'm going to click on Q cube. So Q cube for you guys should be on the initialize tab right at the bottom, Q cube, and that's going to give you a super simplified piece of geometry. All right? You can increase the resolution, in fact, uh, no, I don't want to do that, but you can just increase it here and then click Q cube to change it. Um, so I'm going to bring in the gizmo, scale this up, just to make like a, like a long stick. And this is going to be the, like a panel or like a divider line for a divider, divider line for a panel. I'm going to change the material so you guys can see a bit better. There we go. So it's, it's pretty simple, a stretch cube. And I'm going to use the dynamesh here. And that's a pretty decent amount of polygons uh, just to basically add more topology in there. All right, but now that I have this, I can go ahead and start playing around with shapes like, you know, uh, let's use the mask lasso, sorry, the mask pen like this to add some masking option in there, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo. I can scale this bit downwards and then push it on the side. So I'm just playing with shapes, nothing, nothing too fancy, just something there that could work. All right. So because we have Dynamesh, I can just control click and drag and control click and drag again to redynamesh this bit. And if we need more resolution, perhaps just to keep these, it doesn't matter what you have in here, to be honest. Um, in fact, this area is looking a little bit too thin, so I can just go ahead and push it. So, and then redynamish again. So it doesn't matter what method you use to create these shapes. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're going to be doing is taking a, or creating an alpha, um, an alpha out of this. So it doesn't really matter what um, what method you're using, as long as it's um, you know it's the shape that you want, basically. Okay. So let's um, let's do something else. Let's uh, add something in here. Bring in the gizmo on cent center to the unmask areas. And I'm going to push this band maybe 
just a tiny bit. Clear that mask, redynamesh. Maybe, maybe push these areas inwards a bit. So again, I don't have a clear shape that I'm going for. This is just, uh, yeah, this is just <laughs> um, uh, exploring the design. Oh, this panel, <laughs> all right. Um, let's uh, turn this off. Let's see how this is looking. It's not too bad. I'm gonna mask the, maybe, hang on, mask lasso. I'm gonna mask everything at the back, like that. Invert the masking, and then we can use the inflate. So for you guys should be here. Uh, inflate, inflate, where is it? Inflate here, just to inflate a portion of the mesh. So it, it creates kind of like a paneling effect as well within the panel. Um, also we can maybe mask this area, more of it. So now we have these bits on mask and we can bring in the gizmo, center it to the unmasked areas and stretch it out a bit or maybe inwards, I don't know. Let's keep it simple. And I'm on mask and I think we can redynamish with a bit more resolution. Hmm. We're losing a little bit of the sharpness. So I'm gonna redynamish with a lot more resolution and do a clay polish. All right, I think this is all right, and yeah. So this is one method. <laughs> Let's. Um, I'm gonna do this one and then show you a couple more that are a little bit a little bit cleaner than this. Um, at least for this, you can also, if you want to, let's say, give it a bit of a curvature, uh, you can bring in the gizmo, use the bend curve or the bend arc, and then just, you know, give this one a bit of a curvature so that you can add different type of details. So I'm not going to do that just yet, uh, but I might do it. Uh, but let's say that you're happy with this. All you have to do, or uh, at least in this case, I would make sure that the perspective is off and I'm going to bring in my brush palette I have a bunch of brushes that I'm testing out at the moment so brush palette here as well as the alpha palette so you can do two things you can create from brush or you can create from um, from alpha so I'm gonna select my standard brush and I'm gonna clone it so that I don't mess with the original standard brush um, and now I'm gonna take this piece that is pretty simple and convert it into an alpha. So from the alpha palette, if you click on from mesh, Siri is gonna bring in this pop-up window, which is super useful. And it's gonna immediately give you an interactive view of that alpha. So if you rotate, this is basically the same as the canvas or what you can see here in the canvas. So you can rotate around and when you stop, it's gonna give you a, you know, a version of that alpha. So you see it has uh, this depth so a little bit darker here at the bottom and sorry at the top and then at the bottom it's lighter because it's closer to the camera. So you can rotate around, hold shift to snap it like so. And in this case, this is actually tileable because it is the same. We haven't moved the top and the bottom. So we can actually get a bit closer. And this is a tileable alpha, which is, you know, a bonus thing. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't thinking about doing it this way, but you know, because we, we didn't move the top or the bottom. Uh, we can tile this alpha as well and we can create kind of like a roll alpha as well. But this is a very simple uh, way to generate these alphas. Uh, here you can change the map size. So 124 probably is a good size. And um, that's it, really. All you, do, all you do after you tweak this, the position and the placement is to click OK. And we have a very clean alpha that we have uh, assigned to this standard brush. So after you have created that, depending on the brush that you have selected, in this case, I have the standard brush, you can go ahead and change, ah, hang on, sorry. <laughs> um, you can go ahead and change the stroke type for drag rect, right? So that you can click and drag and also change a couple of things from the, uh, the brush palette. So let's go to the current, working file, that one, go into solo mode, get closer here. And if I go ahead and click and drag 
this is the effect that we have, which is pretty decent, right? But I actually want this to be inverted and I don't want this to fade that much. So one thing we can do is just change the C add for C sub. That's just gonna invert the effect, right? And the other thing is I'm gonna change the focal shift to be closer to the edge to minus 85. Let's see what that gives us. So that, that gives us a, a much sharper corners, right? So that getting get in there. And then we can go ahead and reduce the intensity to let's say 10. Click and drag. Maybe this is too much. I'm gonna increase it to 15. But this is all, I mean, you already have the brush and you already have the alpha. All of this is just further tweaking to, to refine um, you know, to refine these shapes and to refine this alpha. But that's how easy this is, right? Now we have this, um, this alpha that gives us this interesting paneling very quickly. And what I want to do is store a morph target. I actually had a morph target. I don't know what the previous state is. I'm going to store a morph target and I'm going to go ahead and add these panels here. I think they will look cool in this area. So somewhere there. So that, that might be an interesting panel there. Um, let's just repeat the action maybe here. Just trying to connect one of these lines maybe around there. And of course I'm just going over these areas and destroying it but that's why I kept um, or saved a morph target. Um, so just with one alpha you can start getting things a lot you know a lot more interesting and way more detailed than before. So this, these paneling lines are kind of cool like that. Let's see. At this point, I mean, once you have the design, if you have only one alpha, you are limiting the type of um, design that you can get, but at the same time, you can keep a consistent visual, visual language um, so yeah, I think I'm I'm liking this um, where this is going. I'm gonna use it a couple more times and then use something else. So maybe another one around there. And for for example, in this case, I'm only looking at let's say at this at this shape. I don't care about the other ones, uh, but at least you know again, like I said, it keeps uh, a visual consistency in a way. Uh, let's do the same thing here. No, let's do it inverted. So this is also like designing, and that's why I like to keep things simple at the at the sketching phase, because I can do all this, and if I don't like it, I just redynamish and you know do it again. Anyway, so let's say that um, these are these are the I don't know the lines, <laughs> the panels I want to do at least this type of panels right now, these alphas uh, for the head. So what I want to do now is bring in my morph brush. And this is the whole point why I saved a morph target. Now I'm going to tweak the morph uh, brush. So I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to go ahead and change the focal shift so that it gives me a very sharp line. And with the morph target, I'm just going to revert back to the original state. That's why we saved the morph target and clean all of these things. So I just go like that and that's it. So all of these things that I basically ruined when I dragged this piece are going to be fixed in an instant with the morph brush. So we can also alter the the design a little bit of the um, yeah the, these alphas. So let's say in this case, let me just clean this one as well. And let's clean one here at the back that we did another one. I think that's right. That's, yeah, cool. So the other thing you can do, right, with this technique is, uh, let's say, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, um, this, this is kind of cool, but they feel a little bit isolated. We need to bring something in to join them together or at least in, in, a, in the, 
from a visual point of view, a, a visual perspective, I don't know. Um, yeah, from a designing point of view, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. This um, this line here is sort of like flowing nicely with these angles and this one as well, but they feel a little bit isolated. So even if I don't want to connect them, if I do something so that they feel that they flow into each other, into each other, that's gonna give me um, you know a sense of design that is more intentional than just dragging and putting alphas. So something we can do is take advantage of this angle, for example, of this line and continue that idea all the way. Again, this is, does, doesn't have anything to do with the technique, the, the sculpting technique that I'm showing you. This is more of a, you know, what, what goes in my head when I'm thinking about these details. So if I do that, I can go ahead and use the morph target brush that I'm using to remove this bit, right? And that's gonna give me you know, a bit of a integrating this in a way, hopefully. So I'm gonna sort of do this with the morph brush and that sort of integrates and sort of in, um, frames this shape a little bit better. And we can even do the same thing with the end of this bit, like so. Um, but yeah, that's that's it, <laughs> that's, that's the idea, right. So that's just one one single alpha that we have, and you can of course save that alpha. Once it's here, you can just save it. Um, let's see if we have any questions so far, and then we move on with a bunch of other details that uh, another techniques to generate alphas, more complex alphas that are really cool. We have about an hour, so I think we can create a bunch of alphas um, and start placing them in the character. Uh, how does the morph target works? Preserve alpha and change revert close of it. Yes. Um, yeah. Basically, that's what the morph target does. So it saves um, it saves a state of your model or like a state of your current model. Then you whatever you do afterwards, it will be saved kind of like in the memory. And if you use the morph brush, it's basically erasing back to that state without losing the details. So yeah, cool. All right. Um, no worries, Andres. Take it easy. Glad you had time to stop over at the stream. Uh, I'm gonna pause for like just a second when I grab some water because I've been talking too much, and I'll be back in a second. All right, we're back. Okay, so let's uh, let's add a few more details. 
so we can do you know some simple stuff um, I want to try to do some kind of like areas for bolts maybe so another technique or another way that you can generate alphas would be um, let's go ahead and use a plain 3d go to polymesh uh, make it polymesh 3d uh, and this one has not a lot of polygons not a lot of resolution so I'm gonna go ahead and divide but I'm gonna make sure that the uh, subdivide smooth modifier is off so that for you guys is in here so in the geometry palette, make sure that this is off. So when you subdivide, it's not gonna round the edges. It's gonna keep. It's not gonna do the the usual uh, subdivision or the smooth subdivision. Basically, gonna keep everything sharp. Um, Two hundred and sixty, maybe a bit more. One million polygons. I think that's that's enough. Okay. So now that we have this. Um, uh, I was gonna, anyway, I wanted to show you something else, but I'll. I'll keep working on this and then show you that <laughs> um, how to tile the the little alpha that we created before. All right, so uh, in this plane, we can do a couple of things. We can enable symmetry, radial symmetry, and work with the Z axis because it's facing us. So I'm gonna change this to 32, so quite a bit. So radial count, all of that is on the transform palette. Symmetry, radial, radial symmetry, and Z, right? So now anything that I do here is going to be mirrored basically uh, in a radial fashion. So I'm going to use the maybe the clay brush. Yeah, let's, let's use the clay brush uh, with a large brush. And I'm going to start maybe adding some volume like that. And also make sure that I have my smooth strong selected. That also works with symmetry. And this is going to give me kind of like a soft transition between, let's say, the surface of the robot and this detail. And then here we can just keep refining the the angle, basically. Uh, we can also push things in, holding the Alt key, obviously. And this is like a super satisfying effect, working with radial symmetry to create these these shapes. Uh, I I just find it really relaxing. <laughs> it's like um, you know traditional. Um, turn table type of thing for, for clay alright so let's say something like this um, we can go a little bit fancier let's see I think it's fine um, I mean you can go ahead for example and from this angle mask this bit right and then we can go ahead and uh, blur the mask, hold control and click and click on the mask a few times. Right? Invert that mask and we can use the gizmo to push it up a bit just to add more more volume. Clear that mask and then go back with the smooth brush. That is just if you wanna generate some more volume basically. So that the thing sort of this new alpha sticks out a bit more. Um, what else we can do? Let's say I'm gonna try to keep this one simple. We'll do a more complex one in just a second with a yet another technique. I'm gonna use the H polish. Just polishing this with the H polish and radial symmetry is just very very easy, right? Uh, and I think maybe in the inside we can polish it a bit more. Sort of like to create a, a flatter area. All right, I think that I like that. Um, another thing we can do in this case would be let's say reduce the radial count to three, right? And now I have only three dots. I can use the damp standard brush, and then I can add some some lines. I don't know. <laughs> Might be interesting. Let's see. It might not, you know, it might not, it not by, it might not be what we want. I want to use the clay brush and then just add some indentations here. Uh, we can also use this the the morph target as well. So store morph target, do what I was just doing before, to push this in, like so, uh, and then bring in the morph target. Uh, 
and then refine this so we get very very sharp edges yeah that's kind of cool delete morph target all right and go back to the standard brush all right and i'm gonna clone this again or let's just let's just go with this one with the one that we have already cloned right so this one is the one that does this thing so you know you can start like building things on top of each other so you build one um yeah, you build one alpha, then you create the next mesh, and then you use that alpha, and then it becomes like a snowball of details. So I can use the one that we created before with radial symmetry and do something crazy like this. That looks pretty cool. Um, we might use it later. Let's see. <laughs> this is this is the stage that I spend a lot of time just playing around with stuff, just because they look cool. You know. Um, but let's keep it simple anyway so uh, now that I have this let's go ahead and do the same thing so before we use the um, the from mesh right so if I click from mesh we're gonna get the same result but this time the because we're using a plane we, we're gonna have kind of like a mid grade value which is the um, yeah which is the mid section or, or the the what's the name um, the value zero so Basically, it's going to be the, the surface, the equivalent to the surface, and anything that's black is going to be pushed even further, and anything that's white or whiter is going to be pushed forward. So the surface is going to be gray, this mid-gray value, and this gray is um, 128, 128, 128, 128 in the RGB uh, scale or the RGB color. So yeah, we can do that. We can increase, maybe get a little bit closer here. So you have a you know, a larger alpha, 124, click OK. So now this is what we get. Increase the intensity, right? Uh, actually, this is this is the old brush. So um, let's go ahead and just select the previous one. Let's leave it w the way that it was, uh, which has, uh, I think it was 16. Nope. Hang on. Six. S Sixteen or thereabouts. Yeah. And I'm going to clone it again so that I don't mess with this one. So I think it's pretty cool. And in this clone, that's when I'm going to choose this one. Change the intensity and also change this to be C add. So now it's going to do it in the positive axis. And of course, changing the intensity is going to change the depth of that. Cool, so now we have this um, ready to go. That's another brush that we created. Um, the other thing that I was gonna say is you can actually use these, this tool here from the brush palette, from mesh, and that's gonna create kind of like an insert brush, but it's based on an alpha. So uh, I'll do that in a second. Actually, let's just do it now. I'm gonna clone it again. And if I go from mesh, you'll see now I have this, this mesh here that looks kind of like an insert mesh, but it's actually an alpha. So you have a multiple set of alphas. Let's say, um, let's say, let's say that um, I'm gonna add these dots in here, right? And maybe the other line that we wanted to add somewhere. Let's see that one. So. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna do it so that I can show you. So something like that, right? And then you can go ahead and select the this one, and that works because it is a standard brush. If it is something else, it's gonna create. Uh, if you choose like the chisel brush, it's gonna create something else. Um, so if I do from mesh, it's just gonna add it to this one. So now I have this alpha that I can just drag these things to. And you know, like I said, it becomes like a snowball of details. Um, so if we can go back to our mesh. Now we have this brush that has two alphas in here. So you could potentially do the same thing with the with the other 
with the little stick thing or the um, the crevice <laughs> for the panel. But now you have these things that you can sort of like drag into it or you can switch to another one that is a little bit simpler and do that sort of thing. So that's that's pretty handy. So let's yeah, let's just use that one. Um, I think I'm going to let's try to find somewhere that this alpha might work. So a lot of this placement of these details is also thinking a bit more of the the design and how it actually looks. Um, in terms of like you know it's just not placing them randomly so because again it's very easy we have we have basically sorted most of the the main shapes so now placing these details is very simple it's just now um, like the the design like my at least for me right the the mindset changes a little bit um, I'm still like sculpting freely and all that but I'm more concerned about the the balance of the design so you know not just adding things for the sake of adding it because it's really easy right so that's cool but it doesn't really add much to the design and again because it is very easy you might go like okay this uh, this tool or this alpha looks really cool let's put it everywhere because it looks really awesome but it might not be you know as in um, you know striking to to have that so just gonna make sure I place it in the right in the right areas, I guess. Maybe here what I can do is invert the effects. I'm gonna hold the Alt key. Maybe that makes more sense. So I think I'm gonna repeat some of the effect here, but for that we can create a new alpha. So now that I showed you the process, now I'm gonna do it a little bit faster because it's, again, it's very simple. So let's go to a Ring 3D, and from the initialize tab, I'm going to change a few things here. So let's uh, reduce this quite a bit. Let's play with the twisting, not the twist, sorry, the this twist. Set it to four, and let's say the twist to zero. So we get a sharp angle here. The rest is fine. Let's make it a polymesh 3D. You can use the C modeler as well. Let's bevel this just a tiny bit. Right? Um, yeah, maybe this one as well. So just beveling those edges allows you to sharpen those or, or reduce the, the radius, the inner and the outer radius. Um, all right, let's go to, let's say this is standard brush that we have here and go to brush the brush palette and make sure I'm in the front or one of the front views click on from mesh and now we have this as a it looks like a single insert mesh but it's actually a an alpha it's not an insert mesh because we're doing an alpha and that's it we can go now to our mesh so again you see that even even though we are at this stage of detailing it's still a, a pretty relax and pretty you know sketchy process right so i'm going to use this new alpha that i generated like that um to add some details in here now i really i really like this um this feature of having multiple alphas and multiple things within the same brush so you can save a brush and has and that has all your alphas the only thing for me is that unless all the alphas have the same roughly the same height and the same depth um I have to change the the intensity every every time that I change, right? So if I use this one, great, the intensity is fine. If I use this one, maybe it is too much, right? And also it is being inverted. So I have to go and change the intensity until I find something that I find useful, like that. Maybe change this to this. Um, so that's why you can you know have multiple um, alphas with multiple brushes rather than just one brush. So let's um just gonna set this here. I don't know if I I don't know if this is gonna work, but give it a go. Nah. 
I think those lines are fine as they are. Uh, we might do something uh, different. Anyway, that, that ring could work in other areas. <coughs> I'm going to drag. Uh, by the way, this technique or this, um, you know, you can slide the UI. That's the that's this week's tip. If you are part of my email list, that's I shared that um, in today's list, and it's pretty handy in certain occasions, like in this one. So I'm gonna delete and store a new morph target. And I just want to show you um, an, another idea that you can keep refining and adding panels, even though this is basically a ring. You can maybe reduce the intensity a bit, and I don't know. I'm gonna drag it from here. See what that gives me. Right, something like that that is actually changing things a lot. And then I bring the the morph target. Probably I'm not gonna use this, but just wanted to show you something else. Use the morph target, and I'm gonna revert most of it. But I think I like this, you know, this curvature here, right? And that's just by doing dragging that alpha with a low intensity, and we can take advantage of that sort of, um, yeah, the, the shape in the alpha, and then using the morph target to revert some of these things back. Right? So just like that, it creates this shape. That is kind of cool. And of course, you can go ahead and then uh, keep refining this a bit, if you want to keep it. So you can also use alphas to further refine the, the actual, you know, primary shapes in a way. Mm. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this one, so I'm just going to uh, switch, right, and delete morph target. So switch goes back to the original. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do a, a more complex one, or maybe another detail that is a simpler detail. So just to show you something else, uh, what can we do? Okay, let's go ahead and bring in a cylinder, polymesh 3D. And I'll show you something else. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift. I'll actually, Symmetry Enable. Yep. Um, Control and Shift. Oops. Control and Shift, and select this area. Or let's do it with uh, Mask actually. So Mask Pen. Again, Mask Pen. Holding Control. I'm going to mask this um, this side of the polygon, half of it. Bring in the the gizmo 3D, and I'm just going to extend this like so. All right, maybe, yeah, that's fine. Um, cool, so let's clear that mask, and I'm going to go ahead and hide everything. No, I'm going to hide just the top, holding Alt, and the bottom as well. So now this is like a hollow, hollow shape, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and delete hidden delete hidden. All right. So still using the C modeler, I'm going to right click on an edge and I'm going to use the close holes, convex holes is fine. Click and drag. Let's just make something like that. That's fine. And then click at the bottom. Uh, actually, we don't need to do the, the, the bottom, but just in case. Just click to repeat the action. Um, and then I think that's fine. Just thinking. Yeah, let's keep let's keep this one simple. Uh, actually, let's just do something cool. Uh, I'm gonna right click on the edge, bevel, and I'm gonna bevel this a tiny bit. Maybe a bit more here. All right, and we can turn on dynamic. So dynamic subdivision. Again. I need to fix this first. All right. So this is a pretty clean, a pretty clean mesh, right? Um, we can actually sharpen it even more just by adding a loop here. So insert loop around there and here as well. So when we go to dynamic, we have a pretty sharp edge in there. All right, so I think that's that's cool. That's looking good. 
and this is just a, again a pretty simple simple shape but you don't have to rely on a single mesh right so you can do multiple meshes and then extract a whole alpha out of that so I'm gonna duplicate this one going to move brush center to the unmask areas I'm gonna turn off symmetry now I'm gonna scale it down get out of solo mode and I'm gonna push this one up as well I'm gonna make the thickness a bit more consistent all right yeah so something like that is cool um, if you want to make it a bit more interesting maybe we can use the gizmo deformer so I'm gonna use the bend arc uh, to sort of bend this like this actually we need more geometry before we do that so ooh. we haven't saved one single time we haven't saved one single time um, <laughs> so let's um, let's hope for the best to be honest the the autosave um, is pretty reliable and <laughs> and the and I just did I think it just did an autosave anyway um, so just give me one second I'll be I'll be back I'll fix this I'll restart series and I'll be back give me one second All good so it did an auto save of the entire project so we have all the tools so basically we are where we left off no problemo so that's that's why the auto saves might get in the way sometime but they're pretty good anyway what I was saying is that this beat has doesn't have enough resolution so something we can do is uh, we can just turn it into a dynamish that's it <laughs> um, let's go ahead and actually Let's undo that before I do the dynamic. I'm going to apply the dynamic subdivision, right? And that gives me the smooth surface. And let's dynamic it again. Um, actually, nope. All right, so we have a smooth surface here. We can do clay polish. And now we can bring in the gizmo, bend arc. And I can do something like this. I don't know if that's uh, making anything interesting but I think it I think it's all right let's accept that cool and now we can push this up again here I'm just playing with the shapes nothing nothing too fancy um, all right cool so this is just to show you that you can have multiple meshes uh, I'll show you yet another one in just a second so I have two more things to show you that are pretty cool so I did a uh, radial symmetry, just mesh from alpha and multiples. I'm gonna show you booleans. Um, what else I can show you that are pretty cool? Just to generate alphas. Mm. Oh, maybe 2.5D, we'll see. So let's say that we have this one that we like. Um, I'm not a fan of this one, so we can taper it as well. So I don't like how this shape, the rounded shape clashes with the more rectangular shape, doesn't flow. That's good, even though it's like a detail. I'm, I'm sometimes pedantic about those things. So we can use taper and taper both sides a little bit. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's gonna do anything at all. 
you know what? I'm not happy with this, so I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> I'm gonna delete it. And instead, I'm gonna show you the, the booleans. So I'm gonna duplicate, turn off symmetry. I'm gonna duplicate this bit, scale it down, or proportionally down, right? Um, and in, in this case, we can probably yeah, let's leave it as it is, and we can go ahead and turn off or turn on booleans by we need to click on this icon here. These are the icons for booleans. So the second icon means uh, by default you are always intersecting. The second icon means subtracting. Um, sorry, the first one by default is union. The second one is intersecting, and the third one is sorry. Let's do it again. <laughs> the, the first one is um, the first icon is in case you don't know, uh, by default it's always uh, union. The second one here is subtraction and the third one is intersection of the of the meshes. So um, by this, by enabling this, we are telling servers that we want to extract or subtract this mesh from the top one. So if I enable live booleans, this is what we get. And because it's an interactive thing, we can bring in the gizmo and, you know, fine tune this shape, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to I think I'm gonna leave it as it is. That's actually pretty good. But I'm gonna dynamesh it. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. Apply dynamics of division, dynamesh it. There we go. So now I have a clean mesh subtracting this. Uh, what's great about this technique though is that you can add multiple meshes. So uh, let's say, I'm gonna turn it off because it gets really really slow when I have this enabled and I'm streaming. If you're not, like if I'm not streaming, it's pretty, it's perfectly fine. Um, El Rincón del Estalice. Hello, Paul, are you from Mexico, right? Nope, I'm from Colombia originally. Hey, more RAM 3D, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. So I'm gonna append a cylinder 3D and I'm going to Go into solo mode, bring the C modeler. I'm gonna add a couple of loops here just to make sure that these borders are sharp. There we go. And let's get out of solo mode. I'm gonna enable dynamic sub subdivision as well. And I'm just going to push this one in a bit. All right, so now if I also take this one as a um, subtraction, when I enable booleans, now what I have is this more complex shape, right? Um, we can also, let's say, duplicate this one and send it to the other side, like that, and also enable booleans, and now we have a very complex shape. So before I create the alpha, you can create an alpha from, from what I currently have, right? But Sirius is going to use, and um, it's only going to take whatever the current subtool is. So if I generate an alpha, it's only going to use this. So what we need to do is actually before I generate that um, Boolean operation, I'm going to create a folder here. You don't have to create a folder. It's just easier if you have multiple subtools. You can just uh, apply it. Um, actually, let's just do that. <laughs> just want to keep things simple. So I have four subtools, and then here in the Boolean sub palette, right? I can just click Boolean Mesh, um, but I, of course I need to have the Booleans on. So before I click on this mesh, I'm going to click on this uh, DS div, which basically allows for any mesh that has currently dynamic subdivision, like the little cylinders that we push in, to be uh, taken into account when I generate the Boolean Mesh. So let's click on that one and click on Make Boolean Mesh. This should be a pretty quick process. There we go. Now we can turn off Booleans. And where is it? Here is our Boolean mesh. So now this is a very, well, it's not as simple, but it's just a single mesh. You can give it a single polygroup, right? And of course, this is not useful in terms of, like the geometry is not perfect. There's a bunch of triangles and things to, to accommodate for the Boolean operation, but all we need is the actual, the actual mesh, right? The actual um, geometry to generate the alpha. So now that I have this, I can go ahead and 
let's go to the brush palette that's the one that we were using um, yeah let's use the brush palette of course we lost um, the brushes because we didn't save and the alphas but we can regenerate them since we have all of the pieces in here so not to worry about that but let's go ahead and click on let's select this standard brush and let's do a clone and uh, from mesh so now we have the same the same idea let's go here to our working file and it's going to solo mode so now with this um, alpha oops let's make sure that drag rate is enabled intensity so I can click and drag and also the focal shift back to 80 something all right so we have a pretty cool um, alpha now now I want to have this one sort of like inserting like that right so I'm gonna invert that so sorry invert the effect in the depth so it's uh, Z sub and I'm gonna also change the intensity a tiny bit it's too strong maybe a bit more all right so you know just by doing that we have a, a whole new a whole new set of details so I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before storing a morph target just in case I want I don't like something I can just go back and fix it and we can start doing this this type of things I don't know if it looks good As I said, the, this this part of adding those details, especially if you didn't um, design the details like too thoroughly, as in thinking what they were gonna be used for, it's a it's another part of the designing process. So you just add them. If you think they fit nicely into the design, then you leave them. If not, just don't get attached to them, and then make another one. As as you can see, it's really really easy to do um, to add these designs or these details. I think this one needs to be not as maybe here. Yeah, I think this one needs to be used um, carefully. Just one, one a couple, maybe two would be more than enough. I don't see I don't see a reason to add it anywhere else maybe here at the bottom or we can actually invert it let's try that maybe that makes more sense actually all right again very very simple um, let's make a another very simple one that is it could be very useful Ultimately, some of the most useful alphas end up being the, the most uh, simple ones. So we can go back to maybe this one that we already had. You know, we already have the shape that we need. Um, and what I can do is just go ahead and flip this just by rotating it. I'm going to mask an area. I don't really care about the, the topology right now. I just want the shape. Um, Cool, and I'm going to dynamesh that. Ooh, that's quite high in terms of dynameshing. So, yep, I want to keep it simple, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And let's go ahead and do from mesh again. So now I have two in this brush. And let's see, this one gives us a very simple indentation, but I'm going to increase the, the intensity so you have a lot more. All right. Um, something that you might notice is that the the edges of this one are pretty harsh. Um, that has to do with two things: the alpha itself, the the mesh that we created, it has a very very straight set of um, of edges in a way, and I'll explain that in a second. And also the resolution. So what I can do instead of you know try to increase my resolution because ultimately it comes from the the alpha is to tweak that alpha a little bit so instead of using this I'm gonna go ahead and maybe let's select the standard brush again 
clone it and it's, instead of using the from mesh in this um, in this mesh in this um, detail instead of using this from mesh in the brush palette I'm gonna use what we originally did for the paneling effect um, so here from the alpha I'm gonna click from mesh and I'm going to go ahead and generate something like something like that um, 124 right and you'll see the edges here are very very sharp that's because of the shape that we have but I'll show you a, a way to fix it so let's go ahead and click OK and now we have this alpha let's um, change the drag rect so this is another standard brush so I have to tweak these things again right so you'll see it is pretty pretty harsh okay so what we can do here from the modify alpha is give it a bit of blurriness so I can blur the alpha a bit and let's go ahead and um, make modify alpha so when you when you change things in here if you want to actually create the alpha you need to modify you need to uh, click on make modified alpha so that it just sticks so make alpha so now this one is a bit blurry so hopefully you can see at the top let's just click on that so you have um, smoother edges basically that's what that smoothing does and that's it right so you 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 grab the alpha and if it's if the borders are a little bit too sharp then you can just go to the modify tab blur it a little bit and then make modify alpha and then you have a new alpha all right um, let's undo all this so this is the good one I'm gonna clear the rest um, and also you can go ahead and use from mesh but this time instead of keeping it like that we can rotate it a little bit just to get something different so you can do something like this maybe just try to find a, a good angle all right so something like that that's gonna give you a lot of um, a lot of space here I'm gonna make it 124 click OK and I'm gonna repeat the same process I'm gonna blur it since I know already that the edges are not very uh, uh, too crisp 9 that's fine make modify alpha so right now we have an extra an extra set of details that are pretty cool um, I'm gonna stick with the with a simple one for now and let's go to our mesh let's see how we how are we with time okay we have 10 minutes <laughs> let's just add a few of these details in here and I'm gonna show you something else so clicking and dragging let's embed that clicking and dragging uh, you can actually if you want to keep the the size consistently you can just do it by the size of your brush so if you click and drag now the size of my brush is what I currently have selected click and drag and if I hold the control key it's gonna snap it should snap hang on it's not doing it it's not working okay what do I have that is not working let's see Well, it's not working for me, but it should. Basically, you can hold control, you can click and drag and then hold control and it will snap. Maybe it's my controller, let's see. Nope, I don't know what that is. Uh, anyway, another way to do it would be changing the drag rect for drag dots and that's just gonna give you a consistent shape and you can just drag it and move it around. Maybe without the lazy mouse like so uh, but I'm gonna keep it simple just gonna use the drag rig just don't know why it's not locking that size mm. anyway so I'm gonna just eyeball it for now and again this is a, a, another way that you can just um, 
define like sci-fi stuff if they have like this type of indentations i think they're pretty sci-fi so that's that's what i'm going for them and the thing with these details as well is that there's still there's still a uh, part of the sculpting process or the sketch right so you can de detail this even further if you go ahead and use um insert meshes and we we might get to that uh nah, we don't have time today but we might get to do that next stream we'll see uh, i'm going to change to the other alpha that we created this one and that one has uh, an interesting sort of shape almost like a like a leather And again, it's just a, a matter of finding where the alphas and the details fit without overdoing it because it's very easy to just fall into the trap of adding details for the sake of adding just because it is easy and they're not adding anything to the design. Maybe here. Hmm. I'm going to do a big one here and then bring in the morph brush since we already have a morph target selected and just bring it back. All right, it's looking all right. Um, I'm going to do one more just because I want to show you um, something else. Mm, let's use the cylinder. And let's go ahead and make it a polymesh 3D. Let's bring in the gizmo, sorry, the C modeler. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try to answer any questions, any last minute question at the end. Cool. Um, I'm also going to bring in dynamics of division. All right, and this time what I'll do is I'm gonna use the insert brushes. So I'm gonna use something like uh, maybe this IMM. I'm gonna use one of these, um, maybe one of these ones, this Philips. Click and drag, oops. Click and drag, right? And because I have this object as with dynamic subdivision, it's gonna give me this effect. Not happy with that one. Maybe just do a simple one. Yeah, something like that should be fine. Um, I just think that I need to soften the edges a bit, uh, but it doesn't matter. I think that one would work for now. I'm gonna clear that mask, and um, let's let's see. Actually. Mm, let me undo that <laughs> and I'm gonna duplicate this right and I'm gonna scale it down a bit like so and let's enable booleans it's fine and I'm gonna use taper on the top one All right, um, maybe that's too much. I'm gonna push it. So I, I kind of have an idea of what I'm going for, but you know, it's pretty loose. Um, make Boolean, so now we can turn that off. And now we can enable dynamic, turn this on, place it. Clear that mask, and we can go ahead and use from mesh. And we have something that looks all right. 
So it's kind of like a like a ring with this this other shape in there. Uh, we can also rotate. So let's see. Let's see what that gives us. I'm gonna click 124, and all the all these alphas you can save them. And did we have? Let's see, standard two. Let's select that one. So there we go. That's kind of like the, the effect that I was planning, but sort of sticking out like that. Maybe that is too much. Hmm. I think it was it was fine the way that it was originally intended. Sometimes that's the thing, right? You get you try to go like too fancy and it doesn't work the, the way that you're expecting. So let's just keep it simple from mesh. Um, size 124, click OK. Um, remember, with the same mesh, you can generate a bunch of different alphas. So I have this one, this is the one that I will use. But then if I go from mesh, I can rotate and then just do like a circle, like a simple circle like this and do a, something like that. And then from mesh again, and this time I'm going to rotate it. And it does a tiny cylinder with a bit of an indentation from this shape. Okay, so now we have three alphas from the same mesh. So you can create a very interesting shape for the mesh and then use the from uh, mesh here in the alpha palette to create a bunch of different ones. So let's say this one, the cylinder, it could be an interesting one, right? Uh, I just need to blur it a little bit, modify alpha, so now it's a bit softer. So this one is actually not too bad. I can just re reduce the intensity a bit. And this could be a good way to add some kind of like cabling all around. So these bits could handle or hold the cable if I wanted to in a way. Um, I think that's looking all right. Again, you can use the alphas to actually push the, the shapes a bit more. So, uh, for example, here, I'll just do that, or something like that, and that's just messing with the with the primary shapes even further. Um, again, let's see, maybe smaller or le less intensity, and I can also smooth this up as well. So just a an extra little indentation or protrusion in there. Um, let's check the other one that we created, intensity. All right, so that's kind of like what I was planning to do. So this one, I'm going to try one more time. If you want something that is a bit more detailed than this, uh, you can definitely use insert meshes. But this allows you to go very quickly and also use the morph target to place these things. And if you're not happy with them, you can very easily go back and redo them. Maybe one inside this area could be cool. Just needs to be centered. All right. Um, let's see. Again, I'm just starting to place things a little bit more randomly, just just to to wrap it up here, guys. But um, hopefully, you know you know what I mean about not going mad and placing these details just for the sake of it. Um, let's use the other one that we created, just a simple circle. This time it could be. With less intensity, and this circle can can help us, you know, refine some other paneling. So let's say maybe that's too much, like that.
right? And that just generates uh, another another paneling paneling effect. And with the morph brush, let's refine this one. So this is why I like to use alphas at this stage rather than you know insert brushes or have something like super detailed and super perfect in terms of the um, topology, right? Because this is still sketching, figuring out the design. So I quite like this idea of being able to do these type of things and not be too concerned about what's the underlying mesh. Although if you have a very clean mesh and you have a you know a lot of subdivision levels, you can totally do that. Uh, I'm just gonna take this uh, the current alpha and I'm gonna blur it because it's too harsh. Okay, so that's may maybe not that much. Tiny bit. Let's go for three. Okay, that's better. Hang on, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of this what I did here. So I'm just going to refine this with a morph brush. Just trying to figure out what this uh, is actually means for the design. And I think I'm just gonna keep a a line here, not the entire sort of circular shape. All right, I think that makes more sense in that area. Um, let's go back to the standard, and we're about to finish now. Cool. All right, I think that's it for today, guys. Um, hopefully, you learn a couple of things, <laughs> or you know, this workflow had um, had helped you in some way to think about some of the ideas, uh, some of the processes that you can use to detail the mesh. Um, it's super easy. It's just you know, if you're still at the design stage or like figuring out how everything flows and works, um, it's it's a pretty cool way to to go about it and. The next thing that you can do is start adding some insert meshes and and all that. So I think what we're doing, what we're gonna do in this um, for the next uh, session is to create custom insert brushes that are looking pretty cool that we can add and to keep refining this and you know taking to taking it to the next level. Um, but I'm gonna leave it here. Um, I still something that I needed to say <laughs> before I left. I forgot. I forgot what it was. I'll just check the, the chat in a second. Um, oh yeah, no, I just wanted to show some of the things kind of like that are, that I'm thinking as I design, for example, so that you can keep them in mind if they help. So all the lines and all the details that I started placing and the panelies, paneling, they I try to do them in a way that they sort of follow and flow within the character. So I treat the character as a composition itself. So leaving spaces with more details and spaces with you know areas of rest and all that, that's just almost uh, pretty basic in terms of the character design. But having these lines that sort of flow. So all of these ones, for instance, the idea is, and, and sometimes I do this unconsciously, unconsciously, subconsciously, not unconsciously, subconsciously, they sort of like, um, drive the viewer's attention towards the center of the oh that's the idea at least of oh, the center of the of the face or what it would be the face of this character right so that's that's kind of like the 
the idea. Those are like sort of subtle hints and subtle lines that I want to make sure everything sort of like converges at one point, which is the, the focal point uh, of the character. Um, but that's, you know, that's it. And that's also why I have some details in here. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing that we can, you know, focus on, uh, let's say with the materials and the, and the color, you can also, um, help guide the viewer's attention towards the thing that you want to show basically, which in this case, and in most cases for characters would be the face. So those are the kind of like the design choices that I made when I, when placing these, these details. So hopefully that helps. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I remember what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Give me one second. So, um, is there somewhere I can grab the replacement 3D XYZ anatomy guy face? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Sorry. What what do you guys recommend using Hewn tablet for sculpting? Any tablet should go, should be good. Um, I'm just I'm just too uh, into Wacom. <laughs> it's been like for me. I have tried a few, and for what like the difference is for me is very evident. So just sticking with the Wacom because it's what I like, and what I use, uh, what I've been using for ages. Uh, why some people save their files in C projects and other C tools? Uh, size and undos and all that. So I saw a tool saving a C tool is just gonna save the current tool. So if I save this as a tool. It's only going to save one, two, and three plus whatever I have in this folder, and that's it. So if you save the project, you are going to save all of the tools. So next time that you open a C project, you'll have all these little tools that we use to generate the alphas. If you save the tool, it's only going to open this one up. Um, you can save multiple tools, so you can save this one, then you go to this tool, save that one separately, and so on and so forth. But um, the C project ensures that you can have all of these tools that you worked on in the same place. Also, if you're going to save a C project, make sure that you uh, turn off this undo history, unless you have a lot of space, because the undo history is going to save the undo history, this timeline here, for every single subtool in every single tool. So it's pretty, pretty insane uh, file sizes. Being able to use zero as well, sleep is a pretty good talent. Do I look sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I was just concentrating I don't know if that's what you mean anyway so um, what I wanted to show or share with you guys is the that um, there is gonna be a new contest from the Zeroish Guides website so it's gonna be pretty epic uh, last year I did one in conjunction with um, Marlon Nunez it was called uh, turn your turn your pet into a character and that one had a pretty good traction it was really cool uh, and this year, so I'm going to do the same thing, but this time it's going to be like three or four times bigger. Um, I got some pretty cool sponsors for the prizes. The prizes are super juicy. And the judges for this contest that is coming up is, uh, they, they're like insane. So just, um, just to give you an idea of who's going to be judging your work if you decide to participate, which is free, by the way. Um, Glauco Longhi, uh, Pascal Blanche, Jama Jurabaev. So Miguel Guerrero, which is who is also a streamer, so pretty big names, and they have agreed to be the judges in this contest, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on your email. If you're part of my email list, I'm gonna give you a lot of the, well, all the, all the details about the contest if you wanna participate pretty soon, hopefully next week. Um, other than that, if you visit the Zeroish Guide website, I'm gonna put a big banner there so that you can see it and join so i'm not i'm not revealing yet what the theme is and what the topic and all the prices uh, that's going to come later it's going to be pretty juicy but it's going to be absolutely fantastic and i'm really excited about it and i want you guys to be part of it uh, again it's it's free to join you're going to have plenty of time to come up with something and there's going to be uh, three different categories that you can submit to so again super cool awesome prices and an insane said uh judging panel for this um for this contest anyway guys so um that's it that's it for me today hopefully you found this useful i'll see you next time next week uh, hopefully yeah i think next week is going to be in the same time uh next week is march for me. yeah so next week is going to be the usual the usual time not today so yesterday my time 
Um, and we'll continue with these, maybe adding some custom insert meshes. That's it for me today, guys. So thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.